Hello, everyone, and thank you for your interest in learning more about the best practices we have been developing for glaciology. My name is Jessica Mejia. I'm a glacial hydrologist and a postdoc at the University of Buffalo. Today, we are going to be sharing our work on building an inclusive environment in the cryospheric science community. Before I get started, I would like to thank the organizers of this session for inviting us to speak today and tell you about cryo community. Today, I'm presenting on behalf of the Midwest and Random Stragglers or Mars um, Glaciology Urge Pod. Our pod spans multiple institutions and consists of glaciologists at various stages in their careers. Urge or Unlearning Racism in the Geosciences was a 16 week journal reading and policy design program created to help geoscientists unlearn racism, racism and improve accessibility, justice, equity, diversity, and inclusion in our discipline. Urge was created because of the severe lack of diversity in the geosciences. Of all fields making up STEM, the geosciences continue to be the least diverse. To make matters even worse, the polar sciences are one of the least diverse sub-disciplines as a whole. The remote environments, harsh conditions, and colonialist history of the field have created a lot of barriers to entry and retention. The field has also been slower than most to bring equity amongst genders, as was shown by picture of scientists. People experience subtle and overt racism and sexism at conferences, in the field, in their labs, and at their institutions. This feeling of being unsafe in so many critical work environments results in the loss of career opportunities and ultimately results in a huge loss for our community. Before we go further, I'd like to introduce the concept of intersection intersectionality created by legal scholar Kimberly Crenshaw to describe the complex cumulative way in which the effects of multiple forms of discrimination such as racism, sexism, and classism combine, overlap, or intersect, especially in the experiences of marginalized individuals or groups. Each of our identities, such as race, language, gender, physical ability, age, religion, sexuality, family status, economic status, geographic location or immigration status, ultimately, we must consider each of these things, each form of our identity in order to achieve true equity in our discipline. It's known that diversity decreases with career progression in all STEM fields, including the polar sciences. Some call it a leaky pipeline where diverse students fall out of the system at each step going who knows where else. One flaw in this analogy is that it implies leaks needed, it implies that leaks need to be fixed to get the system in working order again. However, this doesn't really make sense because the systems we have in place were never designed to preserve or encourage diversity. Rather, these systems were built while slavery, segregation, and sex-based discrimination were still legal and practiced in the United States. It wasn't until the 1960s and 70s when segregation and sex-based discrimination were prohibited under law in the United States. And then private and public universities were forced to integrate and were very reluctant to do so. I say all of this to illustrate that the systems we have in place are doing what they were designed to do. These leaks in the system were not cracks, but they are built by design. The system has been extremely effective, but with more diverse people entering the system, some of us who do not fit the description of, of the people that the system was initially built to um, produce, are getting through despite all the barriers and challenges that we face along the way. So just because some diverse people and some forms of identity are getting through the system does not mean that it was built for that. We're getting in despite a system that is set up against us. So here we are working within a system that doesn't align with our values. 
And nothing will change unless we do something about it and change it ourselves by being critical rather than accepting things the way that they are. No one can do this alone, and it will take work by all of us to transform academia, the geosciences, and the cryospheric sciences to be anti-racist and reflect our values of justice, equity, diversity, and inclusion. Together, after thinking and talking a lot about all of these issues and what we need to do um, to combat this, a lot of our work accumulated in um, the development of the site cryocommunity.org. The goals and the purpose of this was to create a platform to share resources, um, the content that we produced, community source articles, and links to guidelines and best practices to foster community, share ideas, get feedback amongst others in the community, and then to advocate for change and be a platform where um, we can call on larger organizations such as funding agencies or professional organizations um, to implement changes that we feel we need to make glaciology and polar science a more equitable and inclusive and safe place for everybody who wants to study these regions. So today I can't go into too much detail because we don't have that much time, but I'm going to share a few best practices. A lot of this, which you can find on more information on cryo community. Some best practices, data collection and dissemination. There must be demographic data um, collected and freely available. We need that on all levels so that we can evaluate the effectiveness of any type of diversity initiatives put in place to be able to pivot if we find that these things are not working. Um, there's a very severe lack of demographic information, especially for the polar sciences. Um, we, so we just uh, don't have that good data and that's what is needed just so we can even have a baseline to work off of. To prioritize mentorship, especially with minoritized communities, it's found that mentorship is a crucial, crucial role. And on cryo community, we have information about mentorship, example mentoring expectations um, and agreements, community building needs to also be valued. If we want to, as a community, decide that eliminating the racism inherent in our discipline is something that's important, we need to do more than say it. It needs to be valued and rewarded right alongside the science that we do when we're hiring, recruiting, um, and we are going up for promotion or nominating people for awards or evaluating who should be given awards. And then for field work, it's important to create a safety plan, have conversations. There's um, on cryo community, we have articles about this um, and a bunch of links discussing conversations to have before going into the field um, and explicitly addressing racism, providing additional support for students, um, asking what you can do to facilitate safety on campus and in the field. So these open lines of communication are extremely important. Providing and agreeing to a code of conduct to set clear expectations for all team members and outline consequences for um, violating those things and reporting mechanisms for sexual harassment, assault, or racism, and any other kind of unprofessional, unsafe behavior. And then accessibility. Does your field work plan for accessibility? What accommodations can be made? A lot of things are just kind of over a thought. Um, and there's a lot more to be said about this, but, and there's some resources on credit community as well. In addition to those best practices, there are some additional things to consider. And there are kind of first steps and things that should be integrated daily. One, address microaggressions and other discriminatory behavior when you see it. 
correcting this behavior should not be placed on the target. It's our role as an ally or accomplice or whatever you want to call it um, to be the ones to have those conversations, to step up and say something whenever you see that behavior. If you feel uncomfortable or don't know how to do that, consider taking a bystander intervention training. But again, it is not and it shouldn't be the role of the victim or whoever that behavior is being targeted towards to be the one who should have this conversation to correct the behavior. First of all, it's not safe. It's not their job. It's not their burden. And secondly, if they are the target of that, the person could dismiss them in general as well. Um, and that's a lot of emotional labor you're asking, in addition to having to put up with and deal with the aggressions in the first place. Also educate yourself on the manifestations of unconscious bias and make an effort to correct this bias. This should be specific to the things you're involved in, like all the bias in letters of recommendation. There um, on Cairo community, we have resources to word alternatives to check for, a link to a generator where you copy and paste your letter of recommendation and it will check for these things, other types of discrimination in who's being nominated for awards, hiring, admissions, who you're inviting to talks. Um, you need to be intentional with these things. Also be critical of the systems around us and the practices and procedures deemed as normal or out of our control. Reassess standard practices in your lab and be open to feedback and change. We're all very good at criticizing and being critical in our work and we need to extend that to the systems that surround us every day and the other things that we do that we just don't think about anymore. For example, like why are we requiring the GRE, right? Um, what is the role of these standardized tests? Why are we nominating people for awards and not groups of people? The list goes on, but questioning these things and actually taking the time to look them up so you can find the answers because a lot of the things that we just accept as normal are actually rooted in racism, discrimination. And these are all the things that are just called this like leaky pipeline that no one knows about. But again, they're all systems that were explicitly set up. So the future of cryo community, what's next? Um, it's well, it's up to everybody, the community. Uh, we would like to hear from everyone about what they want to see moving forward. And we want to encourage those interested to get involved, whether that be by guest writing an article or kind of more like a blog post article on the website, or eventually if we can establish some type of guest editorship so that it would be looked upon more strongly on a resume. We are also eventually going to want to um, write a paper publishing these best practices that we develop and would like community feedback. If you are interested in um, participating to be like a co-author, that would be great. Um, let us know if anyone's interested in that um, and we can develop clear guidelines and rules for that down the road. And then um, we wanna share more resources with the community and figure out a way to um, easily collect information and share it um, and continue to be a platform. But other than that, we would love everyone's feedback. So for now, if you haven't checked out Cryo Community yet, please do. You can scan this link and please um, follow us on Twitter. I'd like to thank everyone for your time and all of um, my co-authors and everyone else who has been um, giving us feedback and talking to us online. Thanks.